welcome back to my channel. My name is Naomi Rook. If you're brand new to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to ring that notification bell down below so you can be notified anytime I do upload a video. Today is a very much needed product roundup. I meant to do this quite sooner. It's been about six months since my last one, but I've had a little bit of a cold. But I did try to do kind of a no-buy, so what's been great with that is I have really, really dug into the products I have in my collection, so I have really good thoughts on all of these products. They're not just, I'm not coming back in a week or two with all these products. I have actually been using these products pretty consistently for months, so I have really good thoughts on all these products. I have talked about a lot of them, and some of my favorites or fails. So I won't be talking too much about each product. I wanna go really fast through all of these products. I have quite a lot in front of me. I thought just a quick rapid fire review of all these products would be very helpful. If my voice sounds a little weird, I've had a pretty intense cold for the last four or five days. So that is why, but I wanted to jump on here and record a video. So without further ado, let's get her done. I have quite a few from each category. I'm just gonna grab them. I'm going to stay in the same category. So a foundation that I have been testing out is the Estee Lauder. This is the Double Wear Light. I have heard tons of things about the Estee Lauder Double Wear, but I always heard that it was a little heavy, so I wanted to try something lighter, and when I noticed the light, I was so excited to try this. I have this in two colors, so if that doesn't tell you that I absolutely love this foundation. It is such a great lightweight matte foundation. It has about medium coverage. It looks so great on my skin. I do have this in 2 and 3 Dune, which is my summer shade. I have 1 and 2 your crew which is my winter shade i love this foundation so much it is such a great lightweight medium coverage matte foundation that does not look drying or heavy on my skin it works so well so if you're looking for a matte foundation and you might have drier skin like i do this is a really incredible one yes it's a little bit expensive I definitely think it is worth the money. I think it's fantastic. Another foundation, this is the Smashbox Studio Skin 24 Hour Hydra Foundation. I'm not a huge fan of this foundation. It didn't blend into my skin very well. It kind of just sat on top. And for it being a hydrating foundation, I felt like it almost emphasized the drier parts of my skin. So I wasn't a huge fan of this. I did get this in 2.15, which is um, a light, cool undertone. The color worked really well for me, but I did not like this foundation very much. I have used quite a bit. I'm down to about here, but it's definitely not my favorite foundation. A foundation I have fallen in love with. It is top tier, one of my absolute most favorite. I know I've talked about this in multiple videos. This is the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation. If you can't see, I am quite far down. I think this is the fastest I've ever used a foundation in my entire history of life. <laughs> this is such a great foundation. It looks so beautiful and glowy on the skin. It has really great medium to buildable coverage. I love, love, love this foundation. It is the most beautiful and it's really long wearing. I use this in the summer when I was doing makeup for a wedding and I was up from 7 a.m. and I was going to the wedding at 5 o'clock. It did not budge off my face. It looked gorgeous. If you are looking for a really, really great, long-lasting, hydrating foundation, this is it. It's so beautiful. The Wet n Wild, this is the Tinted Hydrator. It is a tinted skin veil. It looks gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous on the skin. I really love this. It's so lightweight. It does not look heavy. I hate the ones that are supposed to be lightweight, and then they look heavy on your face, but they're not giving you any type of coverage. This does not do that. It is super beautiful, really hydrating. The only issue with this is it has squalling, which I personally do break out from. I knew that when I bought it, but I wanted to see if it worked. But if I use this for more than one day in a row, it definitely does give me a couple breakouts. So I don't use this super often, but I really do love the coverage, the finish. It's a really great one from the drugstore. So if you don't notice any issues with squalling, I would highly suggest this one. I have a few primers. The first one is the Maybelline Master Blur Stick. I have this in 120 light medium. This is a blurring stick. What you do is you roll it up, you put it over your pore area, and it's supposed to blur it out. So what I find with this is it does look very blurring. It does add a little bit of coverage. So if you're not putting foundation over it, maybe on a day where you're not wearing much makeup, but you do want to kind of fill in your pores, this would be great. But what I do notice is when I apply foundation over top of this, it does look a little heavy, a little cakey, and it can ball up just a little bit. I would not suggest this product for a primer that you're going to put foundation over top, which is kind of the whole point. It does work well if you're just going to apply this and nothing else, but this is not my favorite. I definitely have pore filling primers that I like a lot more. I would definitely skip this one. Next, I have the Elemis Superfood Glow Priming Moisturizer. I love this. This looks so great on your skin. It adds a beautiful sheen. It looks really moisturizing and your skin feels supple. It smells really nice, like really 
expensive skincare. It is really expensive. This is $49. I would not pay full price for this product. It is so expensive. Elemis is definitely a hit or miss brand for me. I find that a lot of their products do break me out and I don't have super sensitive skin. There are just some things that just break me out a little bit. Elemis does that. This one does not though. It is a really great moisturizing primer. Do I think it's worth $50? Absolutely not, but I really like that I have it. I did get it from my BoxyCharm pop-up store, so if you do have BoxyCharm and you see this in their pop-up store, I would highly suggest grabbing it, but unless you want to spend $50 on a primer, I would skip this one, but it is a really great one. Alright, so next we're going to talk about the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. That is a tongue twister. <laughs> this product is all over the place. I hear people talking about it non-stop. Well, this might be a little controversial, but personally, I don't know if I think this is absolutely worth the money. It does look beautiful under my skin. So do a lot of highlighting products like this. They look really great. This one looks good, but do I think it's revolutionary or worth the $45? I don't think so. I think this might be a little overrated. If you personally like it, that's great. All makeup tastes are a little different. I just don't know if I find that this is revolutionary and totally worth the money. I have some concealers to talk about. Three of them are from Tarte. I have never tried Tarte concealers. I've never tried Shape Tape, which is quite weird. So the original Shape Tape, I did buy this, and I have this in 22 Light Neutral. This is an okay concealer. Do I think it's the best? Absolutely not. I find that it can be a little drying. If you use just a little bit, it can be beautiful. It has really great coverage. But they came out with the Ultra Creamy, and I love this formula so much more. This is the best formula from Tarte. I bought this also in 22 Neutral. The colors are different. This is the Ultra Creamy, so you can see it's lighter, and this is the darker one. I'll actually just swatch the difference, which is kind of strange that they are different colors but the same name. So on the bottom is the Ultra Creamy, and then this is the original one. So you can tell the tones are definitely completely different, which is quite strange. But I would definitely say if you are wanting a full coverage concealer and you have drier skin, go for the Ultra Creamy. It is such a fantastic formula. The next product is the Tarte Shape Tape Glow Wand. So I have this in a light. This is definitely a different formula. So here is the swatch. It's right there. You can see it has a lot of luminosity. This is an absolute perfect product if you have a little bit too much concealer or it's looking a little bit dry. To put a little bit of this on, it adds a really beautiful, luminous glow. I like to pair this with the original Shape Tape because I find the original can be a little heavy and a little bit more drying. Put a little bit of this on top perfect or I will absolutely use this on no makeup makeup days just apply a little bit tiny tiny bit of coverage but a really beautiful luminous glow under my under eyes I really like this product so out of the three tart products I would highly suggest this one if you were wanting light 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 coverage but really hydrating and luminous looks beautiful if you were wanting that full coverage look but a lot more moisturizing definitely the ultra creamy another concealer that was all over TikTok this is the revolution eye bright I illuminate it with vitamin C. I have used over half of this. This has one of those sponge applicators. I will go ahead and swatch that. It's right there. This is a fantastic formula. I really love this. It is a little expensive for what you get. It's $10, but it has such a lightweight, moisturizing look under the eyes. I love this for no makeup makeup days. This is my go-to pretty much 98% of the time when I'm not trying to wear a ton of makeup. I just want a little bit to conceal in my under eyes. This is a fantastic one. I will definitely repurchase this because I really do love having this on hand for those days that I'm not wearing as much makeup. All right, let's talk powder. So the first one is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder and Cupcake. So this is a very light pink color. It works really well when I'm fair. I do have it under my eyes today. They look very bright and really smooth. This does have quite a strong scent. I'm not a fan of it. It is very perfumed, so I don't love the scent of it, but I really do like the powder. I think it's a great, really smoothing, airbrush type powder. I love that it's the light pink color. I do have quite a few loose powders in my collection, but I like to have them all kind of in different colors. This one is super brightening under your eyes. But So if you are like medium, light to fair undertone, I think this would be really great for really brightening those under eyes. I do love this powder and I definitely think it is worth it. <clears throat> My new Holy Grail setting powder, the Kosas Airspun. I have this in Breezy. 
This is such a fantastic powder. I love this because I do have, like I've said, that more drier skin. So this is a fantastic powder. If you're wanting to set your under eyes but you're not wanting to mattify, a lot of the times I do like to have that glowy kind of finish to my makeup. So this one will not take that glowy look away. It does not mattify your makeup. It really just lightly sets it. It does not look powdery. This is fantastic. This is a powder that I will use just on the everyday, just to lightly set my under eyes. Sometimes if I'm wanting a little bit heavier, I will set this and then go in with like the Huda Beauty Baking Powder if I'm wanting really bright under eyes, but I make sure to set with this first. That way it's all set gently and then I will apply a little bit of that to brighten it up. This is a fantastic powder though. This is my favorite pressed setting powder. The next product is the Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is the Brightening and Setting Palette. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. This is a fantastic palette, and I really love that it comes with the four different colors. So if you, like me, fluctuate in tone during the summer, I definitely get more tan. I kind of fade. I will self-tan. I get really pale in the winter. If you fluctuate, this is perfect because they have four different colors that will work great. They are very pigmented powders. A lot of powders like these do seem to be a bit heavier. These are not, they don't make me look cakey. I love these type of powders to line up my contour and then I don't look super heavy underneath. I did move my camera down just a little bit because I felt like you weren't getting enough of the product. <laughs> this is just a really great pigmented palette that works for any type of cleanup of your face and it does not look super heavy. All right, let's move on to bronzers. So I have the Alamar Hydrating Complexion Trio. So there is that. You have a lighter bronzer, a darker bronzer, and then a highlighter. And this is in the, hold on, Fair to Light colorway. This is a really nice bronzing palette. I like the powders. They're very light, luminous. They're not super pigmented, so you don't go overboard with these. I don't get as much use out of the highlighter. If it was a matte highlighter, I definitely would, but it is like a matte highlighter with sheen in it, so it's not really like to go highlight your cheekbones. It's more to go under your eyes or kind of brighten areas of your face, but it has some glitter. I normally like those type of powders to be matte. But the bronzers are really great. I do get a lot of use out of their bronzers. And I probably will get a lot more use out of this when I'm a bit lighter. I have the Iconic London Ultimate Bronzing Powder. And this is medium bronze. This is a really, really great matte bronzer. It has a good color, good payoff. It's really blendable. I like this one a lot. I do know Iconic London is quite expensive. I did receive this in a BoxyCharm. Would I pay full price for it? Probably not. There are some incredible bronzers from the drugstore. If you, but if you've been looking at the Iconic London bronzers, I would suggest them. I really like how they blend and look on the skin. Elf Putty Bronzer. So this one, I kind of went back and forth. When I first tried it, I did like it. I do love the color of this one. This is Bella Bronze. It is a little bit darker. So one thing about these bronzers is they are very super sheer. So this looks like it would be too dark for me, but I don't have to build it up. I know some of the reviews I was seeing was that they were really sheer, but they did get a lighter color. So I'm glad I got a darker one. This is not the most easy to work with formula. It can definitely be a little dry, a little splotchy if you don't use it properly. You have to use a more dense brush. I can't really go in this with my duo fiber brushes, which is normally how I like to apply my cream bronzers. I love their putty blushes. The e.l.f. putty blushes are some of my favorite products. I don't think I am a huge fan of their bronzers. They're definitely better cream bronzers from the drugstore. These are not my favorite. I will continue to use it and keep it in my collection, but I don't think they're my favorite. There are just easier ones to use. A highlighter product I got from Kaleidos. This is the Mars Melter. I didn't really like this the first time I tried it. I've used it a couple more times. I'm not a fan of it. It is just pure glitter with no backing at all. I'm not a huge fan of this. I probably will end up decluttering this just because I have better highlighters and I'm not a huge fan of how this sits on my skin. A mascara, I tried this, the Iconic London Triple Threat Mascara. I did not like this. I've only used it twice. It was very smudgy. It flaked. It did not hold the curl. Everything I hate about mascara, this one did for me. I felt like I just had mascara all over the place. I have mascara that I love. I won't deviate from that mascara. So this one was not a winner for me. I did not like it at all. I just didn't like how it wore anything. I'm going to go ahead and just throw this one out. I hated how it looked on my eyelashes. A few face palettes. The OPV Born to Shine. This is a blush palette. I've used this quite a few times and 
I did a video all about these palettes. So here it is, super pigmented. These are not my favorite blush formulas. They are very pigmented, which I do enjoy. They're not the easiest to blend out. You have to kind of be careful. You want to go in with a light hand and build it up very gently or else they will get kind of splotchy. I do like having these for specific videos or if I'm needing, you know, this kind of really unique orangey yellow type color. So I do like the colors, I just don't think they're the most blendable or workable products. Next I have the Cap Cosmetics, this is the Volume 1 Contour. I really like palettes like these, I think they're kind of fun. They have tons of different bronzing powders, tons of different brightening powders, kind of works for almost any type of skin tone. I'm not a fan of this one, it did not blend out very well, it was really heavy, really cakey. Their brightening powders I could not even touch if I put them on my face at all. My face went instantly super cakey, so I'm not a fan of this. I will just declutter this, but I do like having palettes like this, but I have one from Tarte I like so much better. I'm not going to talk about any of the eyeshadow palettes in this video. I want to do a ranking in my recent eyeshadow palette video, so I'm going to hold that off. But I do have some eyeshadow products. So this is the Makeup by Mario Master Crystal Reflector Highlighter in Quartz. It is a white crystal type highlighter. I will go ahead and do a swatch. This is so gorgeous. So it is meant for your eyes or your face. I won't use it on my face because I don't like glitter like that on my face. I love this as an eyeshadow topper. I will do everything I'm going to do for my eyes and then I will take a little bit of this, tap it on and it just makes it look wet, super reflective, very dimensional. I love this. This was a little expensive as is everything in Mario's collection. I love this so much. This is something I do not regret buying and I would buy other colors. They do have another one. I think it's rose gold or something like that. I would consider buying it. This is a fantastic product. Next, I want to talk about the Danessa Myricks Color Fixes. They have different formulas. There are super metallic, there are shimmer, and then there are matte. So I have brownie right here. I have not gotten any use out of brownie. I thought it was going to be a bit more brown, <laughs> but it's definitely a more red undertone. I would like to try this as a blush. I think that would look really pretty. So I'm going to do that. I have gotten a ton of use out of the Celebration. This is a really beautiful kind of bronzy color. I'm going to go ahead and swatch them all so you can kind of see. So these products you can use on your cheeks, your lips, your eyes, anywhere. I really do like that they're super, super versatile. They dry down really, really fast. So you have to work with them really quickly. But once they've dried down, they will not budge anywhere. So these are so perfect for long wearing makeup or weddings. Here is the color Latte. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous blush. There is Celebration, that really beautiful kind of brown bronze. Super reflective and very beautiful. This, so this one is a metallic. This one is a matte. So there is brownie. You can kind of see it's a little bit more red than I had expected. And this one right here is iconic. That one is the most gorgeous, my favorite that I purchased. That's a fantastic eyeshadow. Super, super, super metallic and glittery. I love that one. Definitely the Latte is a beautiful blush. The Celebration is a really gorgeous all over eyeshadow. And then this one, iconic fantastic as an eyeshadow topper. Finally, I have some lip products to go ahead and talk about. Two things that I purchased that I was super excited to try out. These are both from Soap and Glory. So this is the Sexy Mother Pucker Pillow XXL Plump. This is a lip gloss that is supposed to be plumping. And then this one is the Sexy Mother Pucker Fill Seeker Plumping and Rejuvenating Lip Serum. So this is a serum, this is a gloss. This one, it kind of dries down matte. This is a really great treatment you can do to your lips as you sit down before you do your makeup or when you do your skincare. And then this is a good, really glossy lip balm. I prefer the Lip Rejuvenator. I think it works really, really great. Sometimes they can get a little bit kind of bally up on your lips. So I don't like that about the gloss. It does kind of ball up a little bit. But I don't mind doing that when I am sitting to do my makeup because I'll just wipe it off before I do my lip products. Uh, so I would suggest this one. It definitely did make my lips look a little bit more full, more voluminous. I like that it prepared my lips really well. It was really moisturizing. So I like this one a lot. I would probably skip the gloss. I find that it did kind of ball up all the other products that I wore underneath it. It did have that kind of tingling feel, but I would probably skip this one. I got the Rare Beauty. This is a... Do Lip Balm and Bless. This is a super pink color. Probably not my favorite. It does have quite a big a pigment. 
I didn't find that it was super, super hydrating on my lips. This did come in a boxy charm. I would not spend a full price for this. I didn't find that it was just special in any way. It's just a nice little hydrating kind of pinky orange type balm. The product I'm wearing on my lips, it does look a little different because I use kind of a darker red tone liner. This is the Maybelline Superstay Ink Crayon and this is Talk the Talk. This is by far my favorite formula from the drugstore. I love these. This is a really great neutral brown. I do have Lead the Way, which is my most favorite pink lip I have, and then this one is a really great nude. I love this formula. It is so creamy when applied. It does dry down, but it is super hydrating still. It does not look cakey on your lips. It's a fantastic formula, and it lasts a really long time. It looks like a liquid lipstick, but yet hydrating still at the same time. Does not look crepey or kind of crusty on the lips. So I really love this formula. It's one of my favorite from the drugstore. My lip gloss, I have this in Smashbox Gloss Angeles and I have this in Self Proclaimed. This is a really good purple lip gloss. It is quite pigmented. It does feel pretty hydrating. It's not super sticky. It's just an average, normal type of lip gloss. I don't think it's the most incredible. Another lip liner I got, this is the NYX Suede Matte Lip Liner in Sandstorm. I love, 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 love their lip liners. They're just a really great one that's sandstone. It is a wood pencil, so it does smell really strong of wood. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I really do like the formula. They last a really long time on my lips. They're a little bit drier, so I find I can get really precise lines, and it looks really good on my lips. So there is my product roundup. Sorry, that was a lot of products. Hopefully, I went fast enough over everything, and this was helpful. If you like these type of videos, give it a thumbs up, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>